Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique host. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. When I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to go ahead and see our full-length interviews or see all of our visuals, go over to our YouTube channel. There you can find all of our content. Hit subscribe. Check the notification box so you don't miss an episode, okay? But if you want to see the exclusive content, because we do have that that we hide from everybody else. That's where all the sauce is. You got to go on the each and every video that we have in the description section below. There is a link that says join our membership. That's how you can join our membership. Click that link. Takes you through all the process because y'all see us on the street and be like, man, I love what y'all doing. Keep it up. The only way we can keep it up is if y'all go ahead and join the membership. That's how you can support the brand. Thank you in advance. Hey, man, listen, man. We down here in Mississippi. Meridian? Is this Meridian or where are we at? This is Meridian. Is, is this Meridian or what is this called? This Meridian, Mississippi. Meridian, Mississippi. What? Check it, man. Boss Talk 101 and made it to Meridian. It's going down. We about to shut this whole city down with this interview. We got a very special guest here today. She needs no introduction. <laughs> they know her down here, man. Up. Not actually. Tangela Turner is in the building, man. They're going to get to know her today. Let's go. Okay, what's up, Meridian? Um, I'm actually from Dallas, what? Texas. What? I'm from Dallas. What part? Uh, Oak Cliff. I'm from Texas. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you can't say, oh, if you, okay, I'm going I'm to start something. I want you to finish it. Okay. Oak Cliff. That's my hood. Well, okay, all right. That's all I need to know. Yeah, yeah, you certified, man. Go ahead, Mr. Baby. That's all it takes to be yes, certified. That's it, that's it. She, Everybody in the mama hey, know hey, that hey, song. Hey, not the way she just hit it, because she all Beckley and Saino. Oh, uh, no. I, uh, I grew up, I, I'm going to say, off lead better. Between okay. 45 and 35, just up, up See, down. I, I, I set her up for the kill right there. Let's go. Let's go, Mr. Jamaica. So, okay, you grew up in South Dallas, in Oak Cliff. Um, were you raised with your mom and your dad in the household? Okay, so no. Um, my dad, I'm, um, my mom and dad were together, and um, in the 90s, they split. Mm -hmm. How and, old were um, you? I was, like, in the second grade when they split. Okay. And that was really... Um, was it hard for you? Yeah, it was traumatic for our family. Um, we had a... I guess a traditional style family. They were married, and um, dad was off at war, and she was a stay at home mom. Oh, so she he was in the military. Yeah. Okay. And um, she would cook for us. We bake cakes and play with the animals. Uh, she read to us. It was a lot of literature and um, tuck us in. Like it was just really um, like TV family. TV family, you know. And um, yeah. So when they split up, that was like. Uh, just it ripped our family apart. And you understood you were young enough to understand what was going on. Yeah, I was very aware. Were you like, Mama, why, Daddy, why did or did they sit y'all <laughs> down and explain to y'all, you know, or did, it was just one day you just didn't see Daddy come home no more? Um, actually, they were arguing and um I would get involved. So I would get involved. How, how you get involved? You jump in and say, Mama, stop arguing, Daddy, stop arguing. Straight like that. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you prefer more, your mom or your daddy? Because then you know how one child always be like, I'm daddy's girl or I'm mama's girl. Who I was, was it? daddy's girl, um, but I was really protective of my mom. She was really sweet to me. Mm -hmm. and um, But I was daddy's girl. He um, he taught me everything. He was an uh, electrician, so he was really mm -hmm. hands-on and really analytical and cerebral. So we connected there, you know, and um, when he left, he would come pick my brother up. It was whole drama. But, but didn't pick you up. Uh uh. It was just crazy. And you was mad. I was um I learned to you know, I read a lot in that time and drew pictures and um wrote stories, but I was sad. I had a dog and um so me and my dog would uh kick but it. But you couldn't understand why he would take up your brother and not come pick you up. Yeah, I, I kinda just Did you hate him, hate him after that? Come on, tell the truth. I did, but I didn't. A part of me still wanted that relationship. Um, I would see him. It's the weirdest thing. Like, he disappeared, but he would pick my brother up and buy him Jordans. And then one time, he even picked me up with him, and we went to, um, it was this throwback finish line or something. Mm -hmm. 
And um, he got me some shoes, too. Mm-hmm. You know, but after that, he would just pick my brother up, buy him Jordans. But I would bump into him, like, living life. Like, one time, I bumped in. I, would work, I was working at Papa Do's. I bumped into him, you know, and he, like, filled my tip drop, you know. And then I would still call him dad. It's just the weirdest thing. And then another time, I so, bu- so y'all didn't have a relationship? No, but I still, um, I don't know. I guess he was still my guy, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I just seen him. I had an aunt pass um, like two years ago now. I seen him at the funeral. He popped up like nothing was going on, sang a song. <laughs> have you ever like went to him and, and, and told him how you felt like, you know, you wanted you wanted your dad more to be in your life, to be a part of your life? Did you ever t- tell him any of that? Yeah. Um, what was his response? Well, we were going to have a, a sit down, you know, and um, he ended up not coming. He was going to uh, wire my studio's electronics, right. you know, and um, he ended up not coming. And then um, I think I went to jail, too. I had a, a marijuana charge mm-hmm. and then I just kept testing dirty. And then, so, probation just drug out. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I ended up going to jail. But, um, yeah, so we just lost touch. And then I saw him again at my aunt's funeral. And then we exchanged numbers again. And I'm like, I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> you know, and then that was the end of that. But I don't really just blame him because I had, like, a lot of drama surrounding who my dad even was. You know. So a lot of drama like what? what I'm is- still not sure who my dad is. So he might not really be a biological father. Exactly. Your mama didn't say. Um, well, okay, so about five years ago I asked my mom straight up. I'm like, Mama, who is my daddy? You know, like <laughs> I thought it was this guy, and then you said, Hey, it, it may be this guy. So I start saying this guy's my dad, you know, and then he passed. I had like two whole different families, you know. And then I treaded lightly on all the situations because in the background, my mom's like, I don't really know who your dad is, you know. So I had the Turner family, and then I had the Davis family, you know. And then um, Keith Davis, he passed, and I had only met him like three times, you know. And before then, my grandma on that side, she was my godmother, you know. And then I found out she my grandma, but that's after I'm not a Turner no more, randomly, when daddy stopped picking me up. Now I got a new daddy. You know, but then the Turner family, I mean, I look like them. It's just strange, but I also look like the Davis family, you know, and then I asked my mama, who my daddy? You know, and then my boyfriend was right there as my witness, and she was like, I don't know, Tangela. And I was like, oh, Lord, you know, and then so it was like all these scenarios, and so I never just really held anybody accountable. So it's like now I'm getting older, and I was just having a conversation the other day, like, hey, I really need to find out who factually on paper it's my daddy, not who I look like, not who raised me, not because I got lupus too and she got lupus. I got to be on this side. Like, who is actually, you know, because it just matters as far as, I don't know, now health, you know, but um, I guess just even like my roots and being grounded in something. But um, so now you understand why your father probably picked up your, your brother and not you because he already probably know that you might not even be his, his daughter. Yes. You know what I mean? So, but as a child, you did not know that. You didn't mm-hmm. understand that back then because you say you just found out five years ago. But at the same time, do you feel like not knowing who your father is is holding you back in life? Okay, so yeah, I definitely had. Um, Speaking I'm, to the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm in my 30s now. So um, I definitely cycled through situational instances because of daddy issues Mm -hmm. you know like uh trying to find my identity um even when I was younger I was not protected a lot because of things like not knowing who my dad was you know and then I was a child so I didn't know why people were necessarily judging me or treat me a certain way you know so um I would internalize those things and when I got in my 20s not having a stable foundation anywhere you know, and having not been protected, I had gone through things. And so I was living out um, traumas, you know. So not having a father definitely, definitely affected things. I did have um, my big brother, 
And I mean, that was even. But you said when you were younger, you said um, not knowing who your dad was. But I thought that when you were younger, you were um, thinking that the father that you had was your father. Mm -hmm. And you just found out recently that, you know, he wasn't your father. So as a child, you still thought he was your father, right? Okay, so that's when I confronted my mom because there had always been rumors, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, about second grade when they split up, um, that's when. He would just start picking up my brother. And that's when you started wondering what's what going was going on. on. And okay. then I got introduced to the new family, um, the Davis family. And, oh, they're so wonderful. Um, and I actually went to go live with them for half a semester, fourth grade, because my mom had, she went to jail. Like, we got, the house got raided, and they kicked the doors in and was looking for drugs Wait and a stuff. Minute. The house got raided. Was y'all, it was a trap house? Um, we were living in... It was a crack house. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. a trap house. What was it? Was was it frequent drugs being? Yeah, sold? they were selling drugs, and so. Um, but we were living there, the kids. It was me, my brother, and my sister. So one day, the police. It was helicopters, SWAT, everything. They came, kicked the doors in, laid my brother on the ground. He was so little, he was crying. I was just like in the days. I was just sitting there, you know. And my sister was a baby. They took my mom to jail, and then she disappeared. So we were on our own for like. Six months. So they didn't take you to CPS right away? Mm-mm, they didn't take us. To so y'all, they left y'all at the house? They left us at and the house. And how old were you guys at the time? I was in second grade. Well, it was uh, the last semester of first grade. So the oldest one there was how old? My brother. He might have been in the fifth grade. And then That's crazy that they left y'all. Y'all are kids. Uh-huh. There was a neighbor um, across the street. I don't know if she intervened or what. Mm-hmm. But um, we were left at the house for like six months. But then my brother found my aunt's number. Um, Who brought y'all food for six months? Because y'all are kids. Y'all can't go. But y'all ain't got no money. Hustled. Yeah, y'all had to go to the store and ask for money and stuff. Mm-mm. We, um, we, were, we would pump gas. There yeah. was a, uh, we lived off Ledbetter. There was a Texaco at uh, Lancaster and Ledbetter by the train station. That's where I'm from, that little mm-hmm. yeah. area. There was a Texaco, and we would, uh, and then the neighborhood, everybody looked out for us. Well, like, but y'all mm-hmm. pump gas. Yeah, we pump gas. And, and people gave y'all money. Yeah, so I would ask. <laughs> you was the <laughs> one to walk up to the yeah, car. Yeah, I'm like, hey, can we pump your gas? And then they'd be like, yeah. And then I guess they <laughs> saw what we were doing, you know. I didn't. I didn't think nothing of it. Like my brother was taking care of me. We had candy. We mm-hmm. had money for field trips. You know, like I who didn't, cooked dinner? We ate canned food. There was a menu right there, and we ate Sonic every day. Like the uh, for there, six months. It was like around six months. Um, mm-hmm. cause it was the uh, they took her. It wasn't first grade. They took her second grade. Um, second semester. So it was kind of like this summer. You know, hold on, not second, third. And then it was that summer that we was abandoned. And then my brother called my aunt, and my aunt got in touch with the Davis family, who I thought was my godmother the whole time. Mm -hmm. And now she's my grandmother. Wow. You know, and she got us. So the first, because I was always at Biff Durrell Elementary School, but that was the only semester I was at a different elementary school. Mm -hmm. So you went to school. You guys went to school when y'all was by y'all? Oh, yeah, we was always at school. Our teachers even when y'all disciplined. There's no adult there forcing you to go to school, but you still went to school on your own. Yeah, we love school. Like school is the highlight you of our eat life. Too. We ate. I mean, those are our teachers. We had been there since pre-K. You know, um, I was really involved in school. I was like the smart kid. You know, so we and teachers school. didn't didn't have no inclination that they y'all did. were at home alone. They did. Oh, they but did. Nobody didn't want to call CPS because then we had we get split up. Then we'll be okay. away from the school. They actually wow. cared about us and they got that's to good. watch us. So I don't ever hear about stories like that. No, you that's, always a, hear, dope, that's a dope yeah, story. You always hear yeah. that people call CPS in a heartbeat and split kids up. They don't care. Uh, they was looking out for us. I even had an elementary uh, uh, third grade teacher, Miss Edna Elizabeth Hunter. The last day of school, she had a bag of uh, clothes from Coles. For me, and then um, I was walking, and she gave it to me, and she was like, "I can't treat you different, you know." But here's some clothes, you know. Right. And then, you know, because we was abandoned that that summertime, but mm-hmm. we also went to the I am that I am training center, 
And so they picked us up that summer. So we went on field trips and all of that. <laughs> y'all was resourceful. <laughs> <laughs> y'all was, y'all was, like they look, look like they got a little freedom and went, went wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so um, my, my grandma got us fourth grade, first semester. And then, yeah, we got structured. We started taking vitamins. You know, my brother went to Florence. I was at Pleasant Grove Elementary. My mom got out of jail because she was at a halfway house in Hutchins after the SWAT got her. So and, she was gone for about a year? Uh. About, yeah, about a year, because the first six months we were just out there, and then the second semester we was with Granny, and then, um, yeah, she came back, you know, she was on probation, everything was stable and good. Did she, Since was she better, wait, wait, was she, when she came back, she was in a better state of mind and everything, was Oh, she? yeah, she was healthy. Yeah, because she was yeah, clean. Yeah. We was going to church. But, exactly. Because she yeah. was clean. Mm -hmm. um, how long did she stay clean for? <sighs> My mom's been. In and out. Um, well, when she was on probation, she was clean. Yeah, but, you know, she, the party's still going, but we love her. Mm -hmm. She's sweet. Um, Did any of y'all end up, because y'all were raised around this, all that drugs, all the everything, y'all saw all of that. Did any of y'all end up selling drugs after all of that? Um, I mean, you can't really call this. <laughs> when we were, like, really little, we would get exposed to stuff like holding people's drugs and mm -hmm. stuff, but... When we got older, there were always people around because we were smart and, like, I guess y'all know that resourceful. But we were mm -hmm. just having fun. We um, had church and literature, so people would say that we were... Um, smart kids. Yeah. So there were always people around giving us opportunities, you know? So um, even, like, my brother, even through all of that, he went to college, you know? That's good. I went to community college and, like, you know, trade school, like, real estate and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But um, So y'all didn't sister, go down that path then? Yeah, we always had people. It That's was always, good. like, some kind of community interve in intervention somewhere to give us a way out, you know? So things yeah. could have been harder. Like, I, I did dance, you mm -hmm. know? Um, like, that was, like, an alternate Where Where'd you dance at? I danced at Onyx. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, you was at Onyx, and yeah. and, and, and you and you, and you uh, right behind uh, DG. Yeah, that was a crazy story, man. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> how did you end up doing that? Oh, okay. So I was um, here. We got to this childhood trauma shit. Okay, so I did really good in high school. So I thought that I was gonna you do what you say you was gonna do. You know, right? So um, I was in like the top ten percent of a thousand kids with all the diversity. You know. So, um, but I got put out uh, before school, before I had even graduated uh, because of, you know, we always had some kind of family issue. I was even li living with somebody or I was going to emancipate myself when I turned, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, what was that, 16, so I could... Uh, Make your own decisions and do yeah, whatever. get an apartment and just bring my little sister with me because mm -hmm. my brother was down in Houston. But, um, yeah, so my mama put me out and, um, yeah, so I graduated, and I was living in my boyfriend's car. And this is a true story. Like, I was, like, so hurt. Like, I did really good in school. I always been a smart girl. Like, you know, like, y'all, what the fuck? You know, so. Um, you graduated at 16? No, I graduated at 18 with okay. my class. But I could have graduated at 17. I only had one class um, left that was health because I, I couldn't do PE regular. I had AP advanced classes, so my schedules was set. Right. You know, so when it got to senior year, I was, I either, I could have took the health class. It was because of PE. Mm -hmm. I could have took it um, this summer, but I was like, I want to graduate with my class. So I had elective business professionals of America. So I would just come on to school only Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10. I had one class, you know, just so I can, uh, graduate with my class so um anyways and i did really good so anyways my mom put me out we had like an argument over money i always had money because we hustled you know so i would get like a tip job or do like hair on the side or whatever so when i started working at papados when i turned 18 um i started seeing the influx of money you know and i would work all the time my mom want all of my money and i was like no you know like because i was just to move like I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with school. Um, so how you end up becoming a stripper now? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I went yeah, on Yeah, because you straight <laughs> off of that. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's how I ended up homeless. Um, so I was staying in my boyfriend's car. I uh, was working at Papado's, and I overheard a table. This girl, she was like, 
I made four hundred dollars before midnight, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "How? Oh, what? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know?" And she was like, uh, "Dancing at Onyx," and I was like, "What is Onyx? What do you mean dancing? Like go go dancing? Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm a church girl. I went to. I was just said, right. you know, like what you mean? So she basically said Onyx. So this back in two thousand eight, I looked it up in the phone book. Yeah, like mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. in the addresses, you know, because right. you know, like. I mean, I had like a little metro phone, like the mm-hmm. little, so I couldn't see the internet. Right. I, so I looked it up. It was uh, Peeping Tums, uh, DGs, Peeping Tums, and, and and DGs, and Onyx. <laughs> so I went to Peeping Tums. Um, that's out. It, it's off Abrams. It was off. Uh, in in three sixty, yeah. yeah. No, that was in. Oh no, Back no. Back in the day, it wasn't. It was in Arlington. Was it? it was. I mean, uh, uh, uh um. um it was in uh, Grand Prairie. It, it was right off Abram. It was some club in North Dallas. Where at? Um, off Northwest Highway, but uh, like on the other end. Uh, PTs. That's PTs. PTs. Yeah, PTs. that's what it was. That's PTs. where you were going. PTs. So I went there or whatever, and then, mind you, I'm 18. And mm-hmm. that's totally nude. Yeah. yeah. And then they was like, no, like, you too young. Like, get out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I went to DG's, and they was like, well, you know, like, you a kid, you a baby, get out of here. And then I went to Onyx, and then I didn't know nothing about dancing. So I went to Onyx, and then I read that it was topless. So I had a snap thong and some clear <laughs> shoes. I didn't even have an outfit. So I went, and then they was like, come on, you know. And then it was, like, practically empty. And it had just, it used to be G5, they said. That's right, that's right. You know, so I was back, throwback before when they were still smoking in there. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so, um, I learned the game in there. You know? Early on. Yeah, learn how to be. Yeah, yeah, so, and then, yeah, I danced off and on because it was kind of like a... How many years you did it for? I danced from 18 to 28. Mm. Whoa, 18 to 28. At Onyx? No, because Onyx, and I danced at Onyx, and then um, I, I, I would go off and on. So, um... I would I would dance like. Did you ever do DGs? I did DGs day shift and okay. it was good, but that's when I I was like an old bitch and came back. <laughs> Which one you made the most money at? Onyx. I What's the most to... money you ever made on the night? <sighs> on the night, like five thousand. Made five. Was, yeah, I mean, people would make like. How quickly did you spend that five thousand now? Because <sighs> they said money come quick, it go quick. I used to make so much money at Onyx. Oh my God! And it, and it really got me spoiled, and I got a horrible work ethic. And, and you start mind, spending and yeah, money. Yeah, my mind. I just, I just go get some more money. I just go right. get some more money. I just never saved. Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, when I turned twenty four, I um, started thinking business, entrepreneurial minded. So I opened up a lawn company, and that was. I never do nothing like that again. That's when I learned <laughs> to. Um, put like your passion and purpose together you know mm-hmm. so i did the lawn company I, I ended up just giving most of the equipment away to my uncles and then um that's when i opened up the studio like a year and a half after that and um i had a studio um two different locations for six years and then um after that i just started like hey i'm just work focus on my own artistry so. okay so currently today what do you currently do okay um I hustle media from my old studio brand where I used to have physical studio clients, but people still not can do graphics and stuff. Um, I sell creative writing. Um, I'm an executive assistant at Freeway Records. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really cool. And then um, I'm an aspiring artist. Like I've started to um, to really take my artistry um, Serious. to a next up. And yeah. this is an R&B type? Or- Music. Uh, that's from the heart. R and B, soul, um, neo soul. What's your favorite song? Blues. Um, my favorite song. If you was gonna sing me one, right? Get close up on the mic. <coughs> oh, let okay. me hear what, what would you say? Huh? Give a it to Kendrick song. Hmm. Anything. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing what's out right now. So okay, we got go Springfield ahead. freestyle that uh, Freeway Records uh, release. Let's go. I was slashing out and I was crashing out and when I think too much I couldn't breathe enough I got to exhale and I got real ornery full cell full circle still spinning 
Now with Steve now I'd have took a belly fly. Poor tree been grounded me. Couple leeches around and some homies trying to handle me. On the come up opportunity. Thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Love the way that you handle it. I was lost and you found me your way. Hey, I like yeah. your voice. Okay, I'm trying to figure out like she she has like a real like uh, a uh, 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 what you just what's, say? What's the uh, what's the girl that say? Uh, 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 it's like an Indian. That's what it is. That's what it that's is. Exactly. That, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, trying to yeah, feed. That's, and exactly like, that's, what that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, that's a, you hit that. Awesome. And that's you hit, I can't theory. believe it. That you did that. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. exactly what I thought about. That's what I feel. Thank you so much, man. We glad to have you on the show, man. And how can people get a hold you if they're trying to reach? Um, I'm on all platforms at Tangela Turner. It's Angela with a T. Turner like Tina. Uh, so Tangela Turner on everything. TT. TT. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've had a great time. Man, it's thank you amazing. so much for coming on the show, yes. man. Oh, hey, man. man, listen, make sure you guys tap into Tangela. You just heard us sing. You just heard a story from pumping uh, gas yes. and, and and basically uh, uh, raising herself when she was just a <laughs> kid, her and her brothers and sisters mm -hmm. uh, in Oak Cliff. You know what I mean? We down here in Mississippi with a young lady from Oak Cliff, man. It's going down, man. Meridian, we in the building, man. Hey, man, thank you so much. We love you. Oh man, I love y'all too. This has been an amazing experience. <laughs> Dallas, hey. Dallas Trackhouse, hey man, interns, man, hey, and you That's see what happens when you just stay humble and um, you just pay everything forward. Your blessings will come back around. Man, so, I thank, thank God you for you, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One, where the bosses talk. And we out. Come on.